Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. So we're sitting inside the 2013 Subaru. It's the Impreza. And the problem is the key won't come out of it. Well, it's out right now, obviously, but uh, the customer complaint is sometimes I can't get the stinking key out of the ignition. They turn it on, they shut it off, and the key won't come out. Well, I've worked on these before, so I kind of know where I'm going. Let me show you what it does, and then uh, we'll see if we can't make sure what's wrong with it is really what's wrong with it. Because that's what we do. We make sure what's wrong with us, really what's wrong with us. We put, we're on, we're driving to the store, we're paddle shifting, and uh, we're in drive. We put it back in park when we get home, we shut it off, and then the key comes out. It'll make a freaking liar out of me. Let's just run it through. We're manual and bam, bam, bam. Back home. Uh oh. Freaking key won't come out. Now it does. I had to fiddle there a little bit. May give you the indication there's something wrong up inside the housing here, you know, the key lock solenoid, which it could be. Uh, I don't know that yet, but right now it won't come out, so we'll, that time it did. <laughs> Let's just try this again. More often than not, it doesn't. Back in the park. <laughs> that ding dong. I should have filmed it when it was broke. Okay, it's broke. Even if I push in on the key, wiggle, Nothing. Okay, we'll leave the key on. Ah, oh, great, now it's broke, broke. That time it came out. So, long story short, the key won't come out and that's what it does. And it's annoying because they're at the store, there's thieves, they don't want to leave the key in the car. So I printed this out a diagram for the key lock, the key interlock, or the key lock solenoid as they call it. So there's a couple components here. We have the uh, body module, the body integration module that Subi calls it, uh, which has the ability to control the key lock solenoid. So that's going to be the electric solenoid in here that prevents the key from coming out. How does it know when to release it to say, hey, you can take your key out because you certainly don't want to be driving down the road. Your buddy's over there. He's being a hoo-hoo. He reaches over shuts the key off on you going down the road, which is fine, it's a fun game to play with people. You still got the ability to steer and stuff, but let's say your buddy did that and he locked the column. Well, guess what? Now you're going straight until you get that key turned back on. How do I know? Because I did that to one of my friends. It was a pretty fun ride and uh, it ended well. See, like right now it won't come out. Let's see. Oh, we'll leave it broke. Uh, long story short, that's why that's in there, so you can't accidentally shut it off and lock your column while you're driving down the road. How does it know when to come out? Well, it only wants to come out when it's in park, right? So um, this vehicle has an independent park switch, and this is in the shifter assembly. So it's got your shift lock solenoid in here, which is your, your park shift lock solenoid. And then it has this park range switch. This is independent of the one that's on the transmission that displays the Prindle display up in this area on your dash, the park reverse neutral drive, manual, all that stuff. Now it's broke. So that's, that's what that is. So that's what it looks for. The body module looks for the input from this park uh, range switch. And then once it sees it's in park, the body module says, hey, you can take the key out now. But right now it doesn't know it's in park. We could verify that by plugging in a scan tool and looking at data. Um, however, I have repaired these in the past. So we're gonna go just off experience. We're gonna take some of these jiggly bits off down here. Uh, we're gonna get to it if we can get to it. I know these things are a little bit of a pain in the hooski because they're in, it's a little teeny micro switch in the side of the shifter assembly. So let me get some tools. We're gonna have to clean out some of the stuff. And then uh, I think if I remember right, this whole kit and kabooey comes out and we'll uh, take her from there. Need to remove the boot from the handbrake, it tells me, which is right here. And evidently it has some clips here and here can never remember this stuff. There's one. There's another. Feels like we're doing something. It's coming out or it's breaking one or the other. There's that. And then there's some down around the side. We'll give it a little pull there. A 
son of a mother. There we go. All right, let's see. Move the seat forward, it says. I don't think that this, I think we just leave the boot, a boot. Uh, we leave that up like so. And then you can see the clip there. I don't know if you guys can see a clip there and a couple, two, three across there. Move the seat forward, move the bolts after attaching the left and right caps. I don't know what that means, but we'll find them. Looks like there's a screw right there. And what we're after is this actual center console piece. So we'll go get us a uh, Phillips. So we're gonna remove this screw. Set that on the floor. That should loosen it. Yeah, that loosened this up there. And then we're gonna roll the seat forward in forward fashion. I think I have to remove or I have to pull this seat forward also. Because there it is. A couple little tabs on each side that we need to pop off. There we go, fella. Oh, all kinds of stuff under the seat. So here's a little plastic clip that goes on either side. I'll get the one over here. There's that one. Put the knife away. And these are 10 mil in Phillips, both. I call them Phillips, but we know they're not. So there's that, that's what that looks like. Sounds like you need more power, Marie. Yeah, I need more power. More power! So there's that. Does that bring that just gets that whole little jiggly bit loose. Is there another screw up in the front right hand corner? A screw there. Two screws there. So I just like pictures. That's not, I'm not gonna lie. And there's a circly bit here stating that it has a clip there. So Circly bit, circly bit with a bigger circle indicates that we have a clip in the top. So I'm gonna give her a little pop. Oop, there it is. Whoop, whoop. I don't know if there's any wires attaching to this. There probably is some sort. There is wires, but we don't need to unhook them because we just need to set it to the side like, like so. So we're gonna set that to the side. We've got both our screws and our caps right there. We'll grab our stuff and we will go back to the front to get what we need. Do, do. I notice our little clip did not come out. There it is. So we've got to stick that into our the front of our console. It must have, the little fork that goes around it must have just popped up past it. So we will stick that in the back so we remember to put it back on. Where's their directions? I believe this thing just unscrews if I remember right. What's it tell me? I'm all like, yeah, I've done this before. Now I don't even know what I'm doing. Remove cover, shift lever. Remove shift knob on MT models. Release the clips and claws and pull up the cover on the shift lever. We have clips and claws. So there's gotta be some sort of clips and claws on this thing. That's what they tell me. Where's our clips and claws? I don't have a freaking idea out here. Must be underneath this. I cannot remember. Yeah, that key works every time. Clips and claws. Nope, we'll leave that on. Uh, because we don't need to take that off because it is not a manual transmission. Where's my white thingy? Clips and claws must be on this. Not Santa Claus either. There's some clips. Get up in here with a stupid phone. Jeez Louise! Stuff. We'll just set that up here so we don't. Actually, we'll set that on the floor. Otherwise, I'm just gonna dump. 
Yeah, telemarketers, schmelemarketers. Okay, so there's that. Now that that is off, we have a couple screws up and towards the front here, which we will remove like so. Because we need to get to the wiring for the shifter. And then we take out them two screws. We're going to set them on the floor. They are a little different than our first screw we took out. Okay. Okay. And then what do we have? Remove the left and right panel center LWR because we know what LWR means. Let's just look at pictures again. A couple screws and a couple clippy doodads. Any more pictures? Yeah, more screws, more clippy doodads. And then I think we're home free. Let's see. Get some screws back up in this joint. Doesn't say anything about taking this thing off. However, those screws back here, there's two screws under here, which are accessible when you put it back in park. <laughs> That's helpful. Marie? Yeah? Will you have me a magnet, please? Yeah. I want a magnet. Ah, the little stubby one's fine. Short and skinny. Come on. Perfect. You done did good. Hey, hey, Ron. Hey, hey, Ron. Right, there's that. There's those four screws. So that should have gotten this a bit on the wiggly side, which it has. And then let me just give it a classic reach around down here. They should probably just pop out according to what I'm seeing and I'm reading. Let's see. Let me get a light. Yeah, we go way down yonder. This is at the very front portion of the lower portion of the trim. There is a push nail. I'm gonna work that loose and then we're gonna get up in there with a wedge. Come on out of there, fella. It's in a recessed hole, so it's kind of a pain in the hoose again. There we are. So there is that little Christmas tree, one on each side, and that should make this whole panel. Loosey goosey, I took the one out on the other side, so now we're good. Now we'll set that down there. Little momento, there we go. Now this whole thing is loose. And we will slide that right out of the way. Slide that right over here. Oh, and it, look at that, it comes in two pieces. That's fun. So, anyhow, that's how that comes apart. It's got little clicky doodads that go into little hole doodads over there. All right, that's set to the side. Now, we can get to all of our kibbles and bets, the parts we came for. We need to find the connector. Is that the connector? What color wire are we looking for? Anybody know? We're looking for pink with blue. So how does this switch work when we look at it? So we look at the diagram. Down here we have a pink with blue. And then when the switch closes, it pulls it to ground. So we can only assume that the pink with blue has a voltage signal or a voltage of some sort on it and then it is pulled to ground and that is how the body integration unit knows knows what it knows and there is a pink with blue right there on the top so will it put out enough voltage to light a very low current test light i don't know but i'm going to get one if we have one but eric you can't use the test light on a computer circuit Yes, yeah, you can, silly goose. Worst case scenario, we pull it to ground and it unlocks. Now we're in park, so what do we expect to see? Well, if the key shuts off, we expect to see nothing, no light, no nothing. However, when we go into drive, it should be coming open and should light the light, which it doesn't, which means we can take the key out while we're in drive. So, is that test light too much current for it? You betcha, because, well, first of all, this tells us our solenoid works. So what's the proper tool to use here? It is a meter, because even though this only draws 100 milliamps, it's still pulling that down, indicating that it's in park. So it tells us our wiring's good, our solenoid up here is good. Everything's good, except we chose the wrong tool. And I'm back. 
So hopefully that made sense to folks, even though the test wasn't good as far as visual representation. It was good in the sense that we learned a little something, something. Okay, so got our meter. We're going to hook that onto a ground, which this ground worked well before. I'm going to take, I'm going to put it in gear, so technically we should have 12 volts on this, just so I know when I'm probed in. When I'm in the hole, I like to say, there we are. We are at battery voltage or whatever voltage put out 11 volts. Okay, when we go into park, that should go to zero. Like right now, it is at 200 millivolts. Let me change the auto ranging feature on this. Okay, so we're at or near ground. Uh, oh, nope. Let's see, so there we are, 11 volts ish back in the park we got to get it to break we want it to be broken so we know <laughs> you son of a mother I guess we're all sons of mothers ain't we? okay so I'll just hold it here slightly out of park so there we're at 11 volts Technically, the key should not turn on and come out, which it doesn't, okay, because that wire is looking for ground. But right now, it, the key should come out because it's at ground, and it does. We'll fiddle with it some more back in the park. So there we go, back to ground. Be nice to see it broke. You ain't messing with no broke, broke. Because <laughs> we we done too much meddling. Oh, now you're gonna work every time, aren't you? I would love to just show you folks, but apparently, apparently, it is now fixed. I'm driving to the grocery store. I got my groceries back in my car, and it works every time because we're making a video. That's the way life works. That's a song I just made up. Freaking jerk car. have to believe me folks that these things break because it's inside and it's warmed up now but I mean we just wiggle on the ship here just break <laughs> I hate my life Well, we can answer the age-old question. Yes, it's full battery voltage there, because when a car is running, it is full battery voltage. <laughs> but now it's going to work every time, every time. What if I just slip it in real slow? Then what am I going to do? <laughs> it's still going to work. Anyhow, this is me giving up on life every time all right folks three hours has passed i've shifted back and forth and back and forth and back and forth <laughs> i cannot get the little son of a ruski to break on me um so you're gonna have to you're gonna have to trust the old pop pop here and come under the wing and just know that i'm right the switch is faulty it is a little micro switch like I said I've done these in the past and it's what you find every single time I do notice at some points it does not pull all the way to ground it'll be stuck around a half a volt or so and then you wiggle it a little bit it's like right now it's at a quarter volt 300 millivolts and then it slowly pulls itself all the way to ground so perhaps by bringing it inside and letting it warm up slightly 
Um, it's right there, it's at a quarter volt and then it slowly peters its way down. Um, you know, it's just, you know, gummed up perhaps, but um, in this case, uh, based on experience, uh, knowing what I know, gosh, I wish I could get it to break for you. I'm gonna order the shifter assembly. That's the only way you can buy that switch through Subi is you get the whole lower half of the uh, shifter here. Now, sometimes that proposes a problem because some of these I've done in the past, the uh, linkage on the bottom that hooks to the shift cable for the transmission um, is a mother lover and it is rusty and crusty. So what you do is you end up taking this assembly out, tipping it to the side and trying to fish that. That micro switch is way inside the assembly and try to get it up in there and it's a it's a jerk to do. Um, so that's that. What more can I say? <laughs> I'm gonna go order some parts. I'm not gonna send this thing outside with no problems found at the current time scenario because I know it's gonna come back. Get me, go get me. And uh, we're gonna get her done. Um, I'm trying to remember. To get to the shift linkage, it has to be done from underneath, but I believe that it can be lifted up and then you can fish it out if it's not all rusty crusty. So, we'll uh, carry on that process when the new parts show up. So despite my valiant efforts to get it to break to show you what it looks like, uh, it didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Why? It's because I have the camera on. And some people will say, well, maybe it's just a loose connection in that connector. No, it's not. Trust me. Sometimes you gotta have to trust me, folks. Um, it's because we've fiddled, we've shifted, it's warmer. I mean, it's 65 in here, it's zero out there. Uh, if those switches get gummy, that's when they're gonna goof, is when they're cold. Um, I'm gonna order the shift assembly. Uh, hopefully you understood our testing methods based on what we've seen on the diagram, how that works. That switch is fed power, a very low uh, current carrying capability. Came with light 100 milliamp test light, has to be checked with a meter. Um, it's okay to stick your test light in there. If you want to know, is that circuit good? Well, just pull it to ground. The easiest way to pull it to ground is, you know, with a test light. Uh, because let's say that was shorted to power somehow, somewhere in the harness. If you put your test light in it, worst thing that's going to happen, it's going to light your test light. If you stuck a ground wire in it to ground, and it was indeed shorted to a 12 volt source, well, now something's going to go up in smoke. So a test light is always the best option uh, on computer controlled circuits. Wait till you tell your teacher that at school. He'll freak out. Um, but anywho, we'll leave it at that. Hopefully, when I get the part, hopefully you guys will get the video. It's going to be dependent on time available. And otherwise, you know how to diagnose it. If you're crafty, you can take this thing out, take it apart, and perhaps replace just like a micro switch. But like I say, I've done those in the past where I've had to fish just that switch in with a little metal tang on it, and they're a pain in the neck to do. Uh, because of where it sits. There's a couple of them in the shift assembly, so make sure you're changing the right one. Uh, if I remember right, they were wired in a pair, and I you know, did both of them on the last one I did, um, but it was a real pain in the neck because of the way the wires run. So we'll leave it at that. How about you guys? Go down there in that comment box, leave a question, comment, criticism, or concern. While you're down there, subscribe, ring that bell, and just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.